Hey gang, it's Chris. Thanks for watching. There's a lot of games I could show you on film. There's a lot of plays I could show you. We're viewing our Thursday show as sort of a catch-all. We're going to catch up on a bunch of plays. Just sort of throw a lot of things at you. Box score lies. Players you can believe in. Players you maybe shouldn't believe in. I'll show you like five meaningful things for fantasy that I think I saw on film. I'm going to start out with quite a meaningful player, George Kittle. I told you I liked him this summer. And I sure liked what the output was in week one. There was five catches for 90 yards. A lot of good, a little bit of bad. Let's take a look. So I like these twin plays I'm about to show you because they're the same concept. And they're trying to take advantage of what Kyle Shanahan evidently believed was an over-pursuing Vikings defense. But they also show that Shanny Jr., wants Kittle in the open field. In the time it's taken me to describe an overview, you've already seen the plan here. Get the entire offense flowing left, send Kittle right, get him in space. And literally, literally, the very next play, you get this. The same play, run it the other way. Let's slow down the Vikings defense. Cool, awesome. And Kittle himself, isn't doing anything otherworldly here that a whole ton of other players can't do, but it's okay because I'm cool partaking in the dude the Niners want to use this sort of concept with. Hey, a quick break to thank Lisa for sponsoring again today. They sponsored all week and they're such a valued supporter of the Harris Football Properties. I can get you a discount on a mattress, $160 off their Lisa model, $235 off their Sapira model, I sleep on Alisa every single night. It's absolutely great for my back. Of course, it doesn't really matter so much what I say. What matters is how it feels to you. So they will ship a mattress direct to your door and give you 100 risk-free nights to try out that mattress. Make sure you love it. And if you don't, send it back. No charge for the pickup, and you get all your money back as well. Thank you very much for, to Lisa for sponsoring. L-E-E-S-A dot com slash Harris, or use the promo code Harris to get that discount. Let's get back to more film. Some more George Kittle, and I like this even better. The Niners line him up slot right, and they motion the flanker away from him. So you see uh, from the press box view here that Kittle is set alone on that side of the offense, which means, okay, I'm one-on-one -on, -one on the nickel corner. This is a third down with the crowd going crazy. And remember, I did a video about Kittle over the summer, mentioned it already. You can look it up. I talked about how I went into watching Kittle's film this summer thinking, nothing, just a guy. And he was my single biggest discovery that I didn't know I liked until I rewatched the film. That cut, the way Kittle comes out of that break, that's wide receiver stuff. I mean, he dusts a corner who knows that Kittle needs to get to the sticks. It's a really good route. On this one, he's one-on-one, -on -one, slot left there, matched up with Harrison Smith, Pretty fair safety. Look at Kittle dust him off the line. And he's open, and Jimmy Garoppolo just misses the throw. This should have been a long touchdown. And this one's a heartbreaker. I can't decide whether it's actually a drop. The announcers made a big deal of it being a drop. I mean, a little overthrown. It's a heartbreaker for the Vikings, because very next play, one of Garoppolo's wideouts falls down. Vikings get a pick six. And of course, this is... A blown coverage. So I'm not going to get too crazy about, wow, look at what Kittle did to get himself open here. But the fact is, how close was George Kittle to having 200 yards and two touchdowns in this game? So yeah, I can't legislate usage. I can't tell you for sure that it'll always be thus. Every game plan is not exactly the same. But I can say that I see enough skill from Kittle, saw it over the summer, really saw it in this game too, that if the volume continues... Kittle's got a chance to be a fantasy monster because he is extremely quick coming out of breaks. He's a good enough athlete. I have him tight end number seven against the Lions this week. I think he's a fantasy starter. Let's talk about some week two picks. Here they are, my picks against the spread for week two. Now, maybe the only reason I'm carrying on with making picks on the show is the ones I gave you. Last week went 10-3-1 against the spread, and as soon as I go 3-10-1 this week, I'll feel less incentivized to brag. The five asterisk games there are the ones where I had the biggest difference in my projected line compared to where the market was, at least as of this morning. So I guess maybe that's the games I feel best about. And you know, it's always relatively speaking, but you know, 
would the Panthers be getting six in Atlanta? I didn't think so, so I like that. Lions getting six in San Francisco, the key number six apparently. Broncos giving six against the Raiders. I have a feeling that gets worse in Oakland before it gets better. I guess the Colts in Washington getting six. I just saw the six, so I had to take it, but hopefully the hurricane isn't so bad that they can't play the game. Hopefully the hurricane isn't so bad where you are that you're okay. And I know you're laughing at me, I don't think there's any way in the world the Chargers should be getting seven and a half points on the road. I don't care if Buffalo did just lose by 700 points. Okay, and now let's wrap up the week with something fun. How about a countdown of five things I saw on film that I think the fantasy player needs to know is going on, good and bad. Let's count them down, five through one. I'm sort of making this up as I go along, but let's take a look. Here we go. I've mentioned this play on the podcast Thought I'd show you, see what you think. From the press box, in the rain, there's Josh Gordon. He's the split end here. The outside receiver actually motions to the backfield, leaving Gordon one-on-one -on -one against Joe Hayden. As the snap happens, the play progresses. You'll see the single deep safety just blatantly sit on the short crossing route coming in front of him, other side of the field. Not a bad plan. That's Jarvis Landry. He had 7,000 targets in that game. But even Tyrod Taylor, who is pretty darn gun-shy, knows that when he gets this look, he's supposed to take the deep shot to Josh Gordon, and he does. And what I specifically want to talk about is, does Gordon run past Joe Hayden here? I would argue Hayden stays with him pretty well. That had me a little bit concerned. Now, wet conditions. Also, I think you can argue there's a half step there toward the end where Gordon has to slow down just a little bit. Maybe it's tiny bit underthrown. I don't know, I still think the guy that we think is the Flash, <laughs> he should have a lead in that foot race. I'm going to give Gordon the benefit of the doubt for this game. I have him ranked number 21 in standard, number 23 in PPR for wideouts this week. But I have my eye on this. I want to see separation this week. The box scores all have this literally wrong. If you read the box score for this play, you see Derrick Henry, two-yard gain, negated by holding. No, that is not a two-yard gain. That would have been a 62-yard touchdown, and we would not be freaking out as much about Derrick Henry. Now, maybe we would have been wrong. Maybe we should be freaking out anyway, even if he'd scored this touchdown. Deion Lewis played 47 snaps. Henry played 20 in the Lightning game, and the score wasn't that out of control. I actually did rank Lewis higher than Henry this week, but this is a shaky holding call on Delaney Walker moments before Walker is out for the season with an injury. I think otherwise the temptation would be to laugh off this week one Henry result and just say, eh, long touchdown, I'm good, that's what he does. And let's say, I mean, Derrick Henry, not very quick and not great acceleration, but when he gets the long runway and gets going, he's really fast and obviously he's a giant. You saw Robbie Anderson's touchdown Monday night against the Lions. You probably even took note because as you can see, as the play progresses and Sam Darnold pulls the trigger, that is one heck of an accurate throw. I don't think it's the best defense in the world by Tavon Wilson. Patriots fans are used to that. But what I wanted to call your attention to was this end zone view of Darnold on this play and how he gets Anderson open. Look at the little shoulder shake as he hits the top of his drop. Oh, for a defensive back looking into the backfield? Oh, that's, that's candy. That's catnip. You react. You can't help it. You twitch and you're in trouble. If we space it back out again to the press box view, watch the safety's reaction when he sees the shoulder, shoulder shake. Yoink! You know, he, he bites on the underneath route. He thinks, well, that's where the ball's going. Anderson gets open. I'm not using Sam Darnold in a fantasy league just yet, but I like it. I know Jarvis Landry had one gnarly drop on a short cross in overtime, but look at this catch. Look at him come back to that ball. Appreciate how hard... This is to do not in the rain, let alone, you know, monsoon. It's a badly underthrown ball because, well, Tyrod Taylor. But what a catch. What hands. Never doubt Jarvis Landry's hands. And maybe the most important thing that happened in week one I haven't, that I haven't shown you on film yet, Andrew Luck's arm strength. This throw, this is more than 30 yards. Is it on a rope? I mean... It's not a laser, it's not a Pat Mahomes throw, but it's a deep out, and I think Luck does drive the ball. Now that flag you see there was for offensive PI, but I like it. 
and same drive, opposite sideline, T.Y. Hilton again, drive the ball to the other sideline. Not calling Andrew Luck's arm the biggest in the league, but I, I think if we're worried that suddenly latter-day Andrew Luck is Case Keenum, we shouldn't be. All right, well, that's it for today. That's it for this week. Really appreciate you watching. I hope you get in the habit of checking in. I can, 10 minutes per day, I can show you on YouTube some stuff that's really going to help your fantasy team. And the best way to remember to come back is to subscribe. Click on the little bell. You'll get a notification every time we post a new video. Check harrisfootball.com. I've got full ranks there, and I will be updating those ranks throughout the weekend as we lead up to the week two kickoffs. Thank you again. Really fun week. And of course, we got more game film coming, so I'll see you back on the channel here on Monday. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.